Greetings, weary traveler. Come warm yourself by the fire and let us regale you with mighty tales, tales of adventure, tales of heroism, tales of Tamriel. I am your host, Ajelos, and I am joined by the one, the only, Pinello. My Khajiit. Hey. <laughs> And Arkin here. I don't know starting to love me. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I was going to, but then she walked right across my lap. So my little friendly Khajiit. She's not real friendly. How are you? Say hello. Hello. Always tries to steal the show. She really does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Good to be back. Awesome. Awesome. And hello to the chat room. I see the very first uh, word we got is blood for the pack. So I approve. Blood for the pack. Indeed. I approve of this. Uh, we have a fun show planned for you today. We got uh, a lot of Somerset news, of course, to talk about, as well as our tales in-game. Uh, looks like we got a little bit of a mailbag and, of course, two lessons of Vivek. So we got a lot to go over. But before we jump into that, I have to give a special shout-out to uh, our newest Patreon supporter, Razu. And I actually like Razu because it shows a, uh, a Khajiit looking at a sweet roll, and I approve of the picture on Patreon. Uh, he supports us over at patreon.com slash dungeon crawler network. Your support there helps keep the show going, allowing us to do all the fun stuff that you enjoy every week. So, yeah. Also, Twitch <laughs> subs, because you know what? They also support their show. We got Digital Monk and Viper80 sub this month. Thank you so much as well as a nether brood for hitting us for the four month mark in a row. Thank you so much, buddy. That is greatly, greatly appreciated. Whew. Ark, it's been a little while. I know I know I said it's about been, a, yeah. a weekly show and it hasn't felt that way, and I apologize to our listeners. I have been incredibly sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, that he was yeah i have been so sick the past few weeks that honestly i i think uh we wrote notes about what our game time was and i mean i do have game time which is awesome but at the same time uh, the game time was probably about three weeks ago and that was pretty much the very <laughs> last time i actually did any kind of gaming whatsoever uh it has been a rough couple of weeks so I apologize for the <sighs> lack of shows, but they will be coming back, obviously, on our weekly basis. Um, all of our shows took a hit. You know, our, our Ashes of Creation show from the Ashes even started taking hits on how often I could do the shows. So that, that of course, was an issue as well. So we'll be back to a weekly schedule. Um, and thank you for sticking with us. So, Ark, how have you been doing? All right. Well, I've been doing good. I've been playing I actually a lot of Elder Scrolls Online lately. Again, especially with the event, you know, the um, the Double Experience Anniversary Jubilee event, whatever that one's called. I forgot the name of the event. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even but, get to do yeah, that. that one. Mm. I made a lot of gold, man. Oh. Finally, again, like 500k. I'm, I have gold again. <laughs> I'm happy. Oh, uh, man. Because... Last bit of my gold, I sp I bought the uh, old Mistvale Manor for a PC European guild that I'm slowly growing, the Silver Shield clan, finally. I mean, the guild has been here for, well, ever since I've been on European Mega Server, but I've never really invited anyone because I was using it as a guild bank, basically. Right. Because all my friends in it have quit the game, so it was guild bank of my own but i started to grow it again and decided to buy a guild house for it as well um which i bought with the crowns not the gold because i don't have that much gold but the rest of my gold went into the house so i was poor basically for the first time in a long time <laughs> well because unlike you agilos i don't have extremely high rng that makes allows me to make heck ton of money in a very short amount of time i don't know what you're talking about I didn't even get to do the, the event, which is kind of I'm very upset about because of the worm cult motif that I missed out on because I was unable to play. Well, see, here's the thing. I've did the event. I opened probably about, I mean, of course, I don't do dailies on 15 characters on both servers like some people do, but um, I did a lot of, but 
a lot of dailies for this event, even though I hate it. I hate doing dailies. <laughs> About 200 boxes probably I opened, maybe more, I'm not sure. I only got one piece of worm cult. Really? All right. Yeah. If it were you, you would probably get, I don't know, five pieces in your five first, first five boxes, and then the rest in spread out to, I don't know, maybe 20. Wow. Within 20 boxes. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. So, yeah, basically, I've been back in ESO, and I've did a couple of days. My tales go back to three weeks back, too. So I'm going to – I have my show notes here, so I'm going to mention a couple things. And since we have a lot of news, I, I'll try to not go on for so long. <laughs> uh, first thing I did when I got back to – or rather from our uh, last show is I ran – I got back to Imperial City. Okay. And – you know, it's it's quite fun. I forgot how fun it is. And it's always fun to, uh, you know, kill kill AD or DC guys there. Oh, because yeah. Battlegrounds is fun. Yeah, but there is no alliance pride in it. You know, it's mixed. Right, right. So it's, it was good to go back to Imperial City and live that blood for the packed pride again. Um, and I ran with Mirnet, actually. We ran the sewers. We ran the entire thing, even though he has a low B character here, by the way. I am recruiting all North American people to European side. Uh, we have Gal- we have Galaskner there. We have Mirnat there. We have Gentleman Sarah there. Avi there. So slowly, man. Slowly, I'm taking everyone. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to come, Edgelos. No, I, mean, I barely have enough time, a... time to play on North American, and I wouldn't abandon my my it, character. It, it will it it will be fun to restart. No, it will be fun to start no. from like scratch. Come on. Do it. No, because then I'll be your. Then I. We're, how would I get all my mounts and stuff that I have? I wouldn't. You won't. That's the thing. No, you will have nothing. I'll, I don't want that. I don't know why I say this is a positive thing, though. <laughs> yeah, you will have nothing. It's kind of why I I I don't switch to Android from from Apple. I've spent way too much money on the on the uh, Apple Store. There's no way I'm going to Android. <laughs> I have to rebuy everything. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah. You even bought crown crates, man. I know. You even bought crown crates. And I can like, only stay ugh. in that travesty one time, you know? <laughs> Once. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to deal with that. Yeah. All right. Well tell us a little bit more about your tales, and that's what yeah. we'll jump into uh, first. I mean, I just kinda wanted to get a little bit of what we've been up to since it's been a few weeks since we've done a show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've I've ran uh sewers with Mirnat, and we actually made it up to like started from the packed side and made it up to Almir Dominion base entrance and ganked a couple AD there. It was fun, man. It's like poor AD is just trying to get out or get back into their bases and and we just we were waiting there and smacked their heads and they died. So that was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Looks like we got a follow. Uh, Shadow Heart Lichen, thank you. For oh, the hello, hello. And welcome to the chat room. As I try to get back to game. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. And you should... I, I noticed something there, Art, Colin. We're going to have to stop right there. Your yeah. sympathies for the AD. You My just, sympathies? You just called you? them poor. The poor AD. You are t- you are getting soft on AD. <laughs> Look, I... No, no, there's it no... It was a figure of speech, okay? It was a figure of speech. By your words, you are revealed, sir. And what I'm gathering is yeah. that you no, no, no. are having sympathy for there's AD. No such thing. <laughs> like if, we, I, if I had sympathy for AD, we wouldn't have been camping them and just mm-hmm. destroy, like making their bad day for the worse. Mm-hmm. Come on, you know me better than I this. I don't know, I'm starting... You know me better than to, you know me better than to accuse me with such... Just wordplay. Come on, you're uh, hey, you're I, lacking. You're you're out of tempo, man. I've you I've are, seen the pictures from Gal- uh, Glistener. You know they are lies. Yeah. They are blasphemic lies. You as an Come elf, I've not... seen a lot. So, look, we've seen you as an elf too. Uh, Galasner works both ways. Uh, He's <laughs> he strikes both ways, man. <laughs> he hits everybody at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a shame, Galasner. Uh, we know you. At one point, Galasner makes. Like amazing Warhammer 40k art for us. Yep. With us as space marines and calling AD heretics. And then one moment he photoshops us into elves. And it's so confusing. Like, do we like Galaskiner or do we hate Galaskiner? It, How does it kind this of work? fluxes day by day at this point. So, yeah. and I see someone's calling you a traitor in 
chat already. So, ooh. And Shadowheart with the bits, buddy. Thank you so much, mate. Well, I guess we're lucky at this point. He's doing uh, Clover, so I'm assuming that means he's talking about my RNG. So. <laughs> Also, like, I'm not a... Tr this all started with Galaskner putting a AD hat on my face. Like, hat. Yep, yep. He, fo he found this hat, Voller, uh, another like, content creator, shared, which is which says, like, best tanks, tanks for the queen or something like that. And Galaskner saw this and put that thing, put that heretical, blasphemic thing on my head. And now everyone is going crazy with the AD thing with me. Come on, guys. You know me better than this. Mm. I bleed red, man. I bleed red like a normal <laughs> man, not not some filthy yellow AD. Come on. Did you see the meme in chat about the only queen worth w worshiping? Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> From the band Queen, <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah, yeah I... I uh... That one was uh, that one got the most amount of positive response. People were stealing yeah. that and being like, "Yep, <laughs> no, we're using that everywhere." So, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <clears throat> so yeah, I still fight for the blood for the pact. You know, it's it's no AD sympathy here. That's the Come only on. acceptable choice. Yeah, I mean, let's be frank. That is the only acceptable <laughs> choice here. Um, so just a, just a random like before we started the show, I'm gonna add this in here. Have you been having any issue yeah. with Master Merchant? Uh, I don't use Master Merchant actually. I've been using t uh, Tom Real Trade Center. Oh, the add-on for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I ask was because um, like right before the show started, I I entered a an area on my main character and everything just froze. It or it went pretty much to like one frame a second it was pretty mm -hmm. bad anyway while i was while i was i logged to another character i thought okay maybe it's just something weird with the server i don't know something weird anyway yeah, i don't know either. um no it, it continued on my other characters until i turned master mm -hmm. merchant off like i had to completely turn it off so that way you know i could actually play mm -hmm. the game <laughs> um so yeah that was really weird and Clan of yeah, Orphan in chat. Sure. Hello, sir. Hello. Like, good to see you, buddy. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. All right. I was just curious if you had any issues with it, because this is honestly the first time I've been able to log in in like three weeks uh, because of illness and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I wasn't really sure. I'm like, oh, maybe there's an issue with it or whatnot, but eh, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I don't know either. All right. All right. Continue with your tales, sir. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, since I was back in Imperial City, I decided, hey, I could go back to Cyrodiil as well, which I'll get to in a second. Um, as you all know, the, a couple of weeks ago was the anniversary of Elder Scrolls Online, 4th of April. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a bit of a hit, you know. We've been playing this game for four years. When the hell did that happen? And we've been recording a show <laughs> for four and a half years, so yeah. almost five. Yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm going to... There's Shadow Heart Think about with bits it. again. Hello. <laughs> he just he just wants to hold that number one spot. That's all it is. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Hundred episode hundred and sixty seven, right? Mm -hmm. This is. I mean, that's that's a lot of episodes, man. One hundred and sixty seven <laughs> episodes. Yes, sir. We have been around. Yeah. Well, we're the second longest running podcast for mm -hmm. ESO. Um. And, uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a, well, a lot of them came and gone. As of right now, I remember when we first started, we were, I think, like, uh, oh, we weren't, Elder Scrolls Off the Record, obviously, has been going since Skyrim era. So they kind of merged over to an ESO show. Um, but we weren't even the first exclusive ESO show, if you, if you discount Elder Scrolls Off the Record. Uh, which I never would, but I mean, in terms, they started as Skyrim off the record, so they had like a hundred episodes of Skyrim before they hopped onto here. But even if you discounted that and just talked about, it, we weren't even the very first one of Elder Scrolls shows. Yeah, but because when we started, there was like fifteen ESO podcasts or something like that, <laughs> and now we are like another follow. Hello. Um, I'll have to look when it ever it shows up on my screen. But now we are one of only three, and one of them, the Lore Seekers mm -hmm. podcast. A so shout out to them. Um, 
you know, they, uh, I cannot read that. Ariel yeah. Gray, Ar- something gray. Thank you for the follow, mate. Sorry. <laughs> it, it was real tiny on my screen. I couldn't quite see it. Um, so the Lore Seekers podcast is really good. They're on like episode six. You should check them out. They're run by my buddy uh, Cash from Mog Nation. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to listen to that show as well, I'm going to give them a shout out because they are awesome and I do love Cash. Um, <laughs> but they just started. But man, when we first started, there were so many and they all started to pod fade over time. So we're pretty much one of yeah. the last holdouts with the exception of the fact that <laughs> Lore Seekers just started. Up until then, it was just us and Elder Scrolls off the record. So, uh, Kamundi in chat. The best tanks fight for the queen. Well, the, the best healers t- fight for orcs. And Zeref, uh, new follower Zeref as well. Thank you so much for the follows, mate. This is awesome. Um, uh, Kimundi, our, our trusted healer. Oh, like well, the, he's, he's easy. He's a solid healer, but like he burns you like this. And then he heals your wounds only to burn you again. Well, he's a bit of a. You claim to be the best <laughs> tank, and he says the best tanks fight for the queen. I'm just putting two and two together here. And uh, do you, are you an AD? Well, do you know who else claims to be the best tank? Your stupid sex bar. Oh, oh, well, good thing that you tear that apart all the time. So, <laughs> otherwise, I might be branded an AD heretic. So, no, no. Nice try there, sir. <laughs> nice try. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So, uh, you were but... you were saying? Uh, I know. We, it's awesome. We're getting all these followers, now. and then I keep interrupting you. So, yeah. Yeah. It's all because of Galaskner and his, and his memeing all the time. I'm telling you, he's causing issues. <laughs> he's a troublemaker. Yeah. Like, he's he's. He's making putting me in a bad situation across three different communities, man. It's not it's not even like only DCN communities. He's putting those images across three different communities and it's spreading like plague. Mm-hmm. I can I can't get out in front of it. <laughs> it it definitely is uh, a problem because now you have your yeah, own community it and it is. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> someone's someone's gonna get in trouble. anyway, so yeah, let's let's put this behind us and move on with the tales. <laughs> yep, yep. So four year anniversary event, and I tr- I decided to do a stream for in celebration of four year anniversary, you know, and it go go went on for ten hours actually. That's the longest stream I have ever did, and in that stream, I got the Ember Plasm skin with uh, Kimundi in chat as well. Uh, we completed the veteran. Ruins of Mazatun hard mode, speedrun, no death, all of the fun stuff. And I finally did, at least for one DLC dungeon, the skin achievement completion. So that was fun. Um, we, we finally felt like, you know, okay, we are, we are doing the hardcore endgame content now. So that's, that's, that was one thing. That was one fun thing. And then for the rest of the stream, I got back into Cyrodiil. Okay. Doing dailies, doing PvP. I joined, this is this, hold on, let me see if this is actually family friendly. And I want to read the new guilds about us section. Okay. The guild is called Firehearts. They are an Ebonheart packed PvP guild. Let me quickly read this to myself and, right, uh, yeah, this is, this is, this will I feel like be okay. Okay. Uh, this is the Guild of the Firehearts, a guild dedicated towards enslaving the people of the Aldmeri Dominion and the Griffal Covenant, our two treacherous rivals who must be defeated at all costs. The pack shall prevail. I, I approve of this so, message. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as, as soon as I joined the guild, I'm like, okay, I like this guild. They're, 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 they're good people. They're, they're like-minded Nords, or at least packed people. Yep, yep. So... Uh, I've been doing a lot of Cyrodiil PvP again, and I again I feel like yeah, this is this is the best PvP that I enjoy, or the PvP that I enjoy most would be a better way to put it. Because you know the siege, the Zergs, especially now that I have a guild and I can find a group of full people, mm-hmm. you know, not not just running solo. It's so much fun, man. I forgot how fun it is. Well, that's kind it's of where so we fun. were with the DCN community as well. I mean, that was yeah. one of the best parts is having people to play with. And I mean, it is also one of the reasons why we still, you know, um, have the awesome community that follows us and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it's fantastic. Because, yeah, 
as we said before, MMOs, the best part about MMOs is actually playing with other people, you know? Yep. So, yeah. I approve. <laughs> In Captain Jazz, like, why do you all hate me? Uh, he is a he's a very po solid Magicka DK, but an Altmer, mm. unfortunately. I mean, he did beat me in duels for like five times, so I decided to improve my PvP build. I'm not gonna get beaten by any Altmer, um, so I need to I need to make some solid PvP builds too. But in Cap, I'm sorry, this is one place like that you won't get love, man. No, I'm sorry. No, if you're an Altmer. <laughs> there's no love to be had. Uh and uh, what else I did? Oh, one thing I want to mention. So, yeah, in Zero Dale, we hate AD and we hate DC and we fight them whenever we can. Mm -hmm. But during the event, you know, there are town dailies to be done, yeah. right? In Bruma, Chaden Hall, all those towns. One thing I very much enjoyed was while we were doing dailies, it was such a friendly environment. Like, there were AD people, there were DC people, and there were us Ebonheart people just doing dailies and not attacking each other. And I loved that. Like, that's the... I felt like, okay, this is why I love Elder Scrolls Online community. Because, yeah, there were occasional uh, gankers that attacked people doing... Uh, just trying to do quests, you know, just trying to do dailies, having no interest in PvP. Um, sometimes I got ganked by AD, sometimes some of our AP friends killed people trying to do quests, but that environment of friendly questing, even though you could just attack each other, I loved that, and it, like, there were points we just exchanged emotes, like drinking emotes, music, dancing, and then everybody went away, did their quests, gathered up while... You can't talk there either, because you don't see your... except uh, whispering. Right. But even without talking, there were a very nice, friendly environment in those towns. And I really loved that. So anyone who not attacked a quester and just kept this friendly environment going, shout out to you people. You are, you are, you are a good side of uh, Elder Scrolls Online community. I mean, I, I know there are like people who just camped those stuff. Like actual hardcore PvPers who camps those uh, towns to prey on the people who has no idea about PvP and only there to. Uh, but is there really that much activity there? Because whenever I was doing those quests, like, I, they're, they're, most of the towns are quote-unquote out of the way. Now, I did them before the change to taking over the town th system. Mm -hmm. But even so, there's only one or two towns that actually matter for that, that conquer. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Excuse during me. the event, during the Jubilee event, those dailies give you Jubilee boxes. So there are 10 Jubilee oh, boxes per town. Oh, gotcha. It is, the, it is the best way to get um, get Jubilee, fastest way to get Jubilee boxes in, 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 uh, in entire Elder Scrolls Online. Because you don't have to fight bosses. It's just like errand quests. Oh, run there, do this, run there, do this. So it's very fast. So a lot of people were doing those quests. And of course, I mean, it's it's a mechanic of the game. I mean, I'm not saying, hey, you can't kill people that are doing quests, but I very much enjoyed the fact that majority of people that I've seen decided on not being uh, hostile there and, hmm. you know, um, be friendly. And uh, thank uh, you, Shadow Heart, Hearted Lycan, for the bits again. He's doing cupcakes now. <laughs> so he's just, he's holding that number one spot pretty firmly. <laughs> um, you know, and I didn't. Even, when is when is that over? When did that actually end? I uh, what? I think it ends tomorrow. I think it's still really still going today. I yeah. Open up the crown store. Yeah, one day left. Well, uh, maybe I'll do it. All right. Now I'm hopping over to yeah, see what ahead, I man. can grab. <laughs> Switching characters. Yeah, I should probably do some more dailies myself too in the meantime yeah yeah that's um, pretty neat. there were even one point that i really enjoyed we were in bruma and we were actually like five above heart packed and just one single daggerfall guy just trying to do his quests or her quests and like at one point one of the above heart packed guys started atta attacking her and she just raised her shield up and waited didn't do anything 
and we we were like, dude, let, leave him be. You know, it's, he's, she's just doing her quests. And for AP, because we can't attack our attack our own in in Cyrodiil, we were just trying to, you know, make him stop. Um, this went on for a while. We were trying to make the dude stop. Even at one point, another guy just came by and started attacking as well. And we we're like, okay, our guy started at first, so don't attack. And he just stepped back as well. And we are watching. This Diggerfall dude just waited, waited patiently, patiently, and just did such a high burst damage and killed our guy like in an instant. He dropped him dead. And we're like, okay, let's not res him. He, 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 he had it coming. I mean, he, he had a chance to back out from this. So, I, I mean, even though Blood for the Pact, I'm all for Blood for the Pact, that guy deserved it, and it was such a satisfying thing. He, he just dropped dead in an instant. So, I mean, he, he, <laughs> so, <laughs> Blood for the Pact, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. But if you, if you deserve it and you, you get killed, it's, it's on you, man. Right. Right, nice. Uh, what else? Yeah, and last thing I did was burning 500,000 alliance points on one single affliction axe for our DPS geomatic. Um, that hurt. He did give me like 100 or 200k, so it's, no, it's like fine. That. But dude, the RNG on those things 500k. I don't know how many bucks I opened. It's like it just didn't drop. Ooh. Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. That's it. Oh. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Remember how I hated Magicka Sorks, Max Sorks? Yeah, yeah. Dude, Night Blades now. Everyone is a Night Blade. I don't understand it. In Cyrodiil, in Imperial City, I don't know what just happened, but everyone is a Night Blade, and and even in battlegrounds and i hate them zeri i know you're in chat i'm sorry but i hate you guys i despise you like i fight them you know they throw themselves at me in no champion point my build is quite tanky against night blades they throw themselves at me even in cyrodiil i think i think i give them a chance to back out right yeah they don't so i turn and i start hitting and they're squishy they just go their health just go down and they go invisible. Couple seconds later, they come back full health. Same thing. I hit them. I hit them. They go invisible. Couple se seconds later, they come back. They go invisible. This is like, uh, it's so frustrating, man. Mm. Oh. Mm. I so I hit night blades. I hate you, people. Not a, not as person, but your class, your builds, your pe. I hate you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. Oh, I'm dying. That sucks. There we go. But yeah, that's that's the end of my tales. I okay, think. Right. I, I got that off my chest, and I can finally conclude this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll go ahead and go. Um. So obviously, I was been playing the Morrowind expansion, right? Mm -hmm. Um. To some, I'm not going fast enough because that is true. Because Ark wants me to finish the main storyline so I can actually talk to him about a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> working on it slowly but surely. And I mean, obviously, we I with being sick, I haven't been able to pretty much do anything recently. So that's been yeah. an issue. Um, but what I have here on the notes is so I completed the Scarlet Judge quest line, so I I got that uh, that whole thing which is pretty neat. And the reason why I say that is it, it kind of feels like the Scarlet Judge in a weird way is like this weird Batman-esque character almost. It, it's kind of <laughs> neat in that regard. Um, or even maybe like a Deadpool-type character. but Because, of course, he hides his face. He's like this... It, it, it's pretty neat. Like it, the, whole, the whole line is he's this vigilante but it's it's more than that. Maybe it's almost like a Negan type situation from The Walking Dead because apparently there's more than one. So, um, mm -hmm. but you don't really know that until you get near the end. So that that was really neat to actually see. Um, yeah, I finished that entire quest line finally, and so I got the Scarlet Judge outfit. And this is actually going to be a little bit of a complaint. 
Hmm. I was kind of under the impression that with the outfit system, you could even use costume pieces because I really love the helm of the Scarlet Judge. <laughs> it's this, this weird, like, all closed helm, Templar esque looking helm or whatever. And, and and I wanted it, right? But you can't just pick and choose that helm to go with yeah. other stuff because I would wear that in a heartbeat. Um, let me see here. I'll. Yeah, I think I can put it on here in a second. Appearance. I think it's just a costume. Yeah, it's a costume. But I know I have to find it. Uh, Scarlet Judge. Scarlet Judge. Scarlet Judge. Scarlet Judge. Dear heaven, I have way too many <laughs> costumes. That's sort of the problem. Uh, <clears throat> regalia of the Sc- Scarlet Judge. I'm going to put that bad boy on. Oh, there it is. I love that helm. Like he's got this little hooded helm thing going on, this full mask that's kind of plated. Um, zoom in a little. Bit. I love it, but I don't like the rest of it. So, because it's it's very very Dunmer esque uh, from Marwin, so it looks like it's made from like I don't know bug parts. So, but I just want mm. the helm. But you can't actually use costume pieces piecemeal it's yeah. all or nothing and i don't know why i sort of made that thought that you know um <clears throat> the salt's coming out from from a uh, shadow hearted like <laughs> yeah i know i'm complaining a little bit but it's okay it's actually a minor complaint overall because the outfit system is really cool it just was kind of a disappointment on my end because i was like oh that's awesome i can use that helm because that helm looks really cool and then it's like, no, no, you can't. <coughs> yeah. Mm. Sorry, I'm still. We actually have a uh, long, like email kind of long uh, message in chat from Belazarus of Aleth. If you want to read it. Oh yeah, well, what is, go yeah. go for it, Ark. I don't have it up at the moment. Right. I have my notes so, up. <laughs> hey guys, impressed to see you both sticking with ESO. I tried, I really did, but I just found that from a PVE perspective, there was just no end game progression. It just felt like a solo player game with a guild chat room attached. Just not enough meaningful content to do with friends at end game, with, which actually helped your uh, character or guild to progress. New content gets released, do the third quest solo, do the new dungeons once with your friends, then you are stuck with nothing to do. No real incentives to return to the same dungeon, little to no reward for the effort. Hmm. Now, I know this is something you it, that bothers you as well, Ak, um, mm-hmm. in terms of like there are no, for example, Mount Grind, like it, uh, like there was in, in, uh, in World of Warcraft. Yep. Or whatnot. Yeah. And it's true because part of this is um, <clears throat> depending on what you're. <coughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. You're going to have to deal with the cough. It happens when I talk a bit. Um, when you deal with the um, the other games, the way depending on your build, you may not even need the gear that comes out of of the trial, the the raid, or the dungeon itself, right? And mm-hmm. the way that ESO's cosmetics are done is everything is via the cash shop. So there's very little reward in that regard for doing something more than once to get the achievement or whatnot because there's no grind uh with the exception yeah. of one or two very small places where there's a grind but even that's kind of i mean there are the nice. skins from uh as like you know the one i got from ruins of mazatun completing all achievements and whatnot but yeah i think it's <laughs> one per dungeon or rather one per dlc dungeon and trial yeah no, and you're right. There are those, but there's none of the super rare mounts where it's like a 3% drop chance, you know? Yeah. The only place that actually even had anything like that is the um, the Molig, ba- Molig Ball Simulacrum in the sewers. Now, also take note that yeah. the game was still subscription when that came out. So, mm-hmm. or I shouldn't say when it came out, when it was being developed. So the concept behind that particular setup was different than anywhere else because they were, when they were developing it, they were developing it like, you know, a subscription MMO. So there were these mm. rare RNG related stuff to keep you invested, and there's really not now in anywhere else. 
Yeah. At least. I mean, the hardcore new hardcore content is really, really hard. Oh, it is. So I... it, 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 the the new stuff is very hard and very, very challenging. It's just mm-hmm. I see where he's saying other. If you don't just enjoy the, and I mean I do, but if you enjoy the challenge, there's still not mm-hmm. much of a reward incentive in most cases because in yeah. some of the dungeons the sets don't even matter to you. Um, and part of that's yeah. due to the fact that there's not really a gear grind, which is not necessarily a bad thing in this game because it does allow for a variety of mm-hmm. of character builds. Like that is really cool that other games haven't had in a very long time. But you know, at the same time, it's um, I I see where you're where you're getting with. But yeah, yeah, I mean, he he's right. Like. Yeah. Even even those these skins and whatnot are not RNG based. As soon as you actually manage to complete the achievements, like the hard hardcore run, no death, and speed run, whatever, um, you get it and it's it's done. So there's there he he's right about saying like there's no real in, intent. What, what's that word? Incentive. I know what it means. Incentive. Yes, <laughs> I know what it means, but I know how to actually pronounce it. Yep. No. It. But yeah. He, right about it and that is something that they struggle with with this game because it Mm -hmm. it very much is built as a story game you know like the single player elder scrolls so the story is its own reward (coughs) but that's kind of an incentive to do it once yeah you know i mean in in my case the reason i was i'm still stuck with the game is that i spend most of my time just jumping around (laughs) so um (laughs) so i still haven't completed most of the hardcore dungeons I still have something to go on. But if I did, like if I was indeed a maximum champion point hardcore player with a guild that does all those dungeons as soon as, as they are out, yeah, I would I would probably run out of content myself too. I mean, so I, I understand the point of view. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at right now is mm-hmm. I don't have the guild to do the, the trials with, so I don't do a lot of that stuff. But I still have a lot of questing to do, but... I, I know that as soon as I'm done with that, yeah, I'm gonna hit that point as well yeah. of what do I what do I do in this game? So I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh I think part of what keeps me into this is um Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I see what Shadow Lake said. It's not salty because you're complaining. I just don't like using the same bit drop in a row. No, it, it's fine. The salt worked there because it is a little bit of a complaining on my end from this perspective, but that, that's okay. It wasn't really a bad complaint per se. Um, you know, and but I, I, I also will say to uh, Belzars that I, I know he's he's from his Aleth Guild. They're playing Final Fantasy they're dealing with a lot of the same issues there that is here. Um, the thing that kind of keeps keeps that game a little bit more fresh is the fact that um, they have tome grinds, things that you can kind of set, you know, artificial caps to keep you from progressing too fast is the best mm-hmm. way I can describe it. Like you, you need tomes to continue, but you can only do so many, oh, you know, a a week so <clears throat> excuse me you're, you're kind of capped with how far you can progress yeah. i mean i suppose even world of warcraft at this point is at this stage because all my friends who play world of warcraft or played world of warcraft they only come back every expansion mm-hmm. to do the story and quit for until the next expansion right, right. so it's I mean, it's kind of, I suppose, becoming That's... like that for some people in Elder Scrolls Online. The problem is World of Warcraft dropped to that point after 10 years of, like, game or uh, lifetime. And yeah. ESO is getting there a bit more faster. Like, oh, a new DLC, I'll just do the storyline, do the dungeon mm-hmm. on hardest possible way once and drop out. And that's a problem with not the game per se. It's more a problem with theme park MMOs in general. The, oh, yeah. And and modern ones in particular because they... <coughs> excuse me. I'm, I apologize to everyone. This cough will not leave me. I've been fighting it, so I'm trying to turn away, but you're going to hear it throughout <laughs> this show. Sorry. Um, 
it's theme park MMOs in general. They don't provide a lot of long-term goals, and that's more with the modern MMOs because there's not a reason. The worlds are stagnant. They don't really change much because of the way they design the games that it's all very curated story heavy and mm-hmm. not a lot of player agency that creates, you know, reasons for you to continue logging in. Yeah. Um, and and that's just what's going to happen with the AAA um, theme park games because it's the non-risky move, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's the non-risky yeah. move. They'll do it because... It's guaranteed to make them money at least for a little while and then move on. They're not going to risk doing anything that could possibly, you know, you know, lose them money. Yeah. So they'll stick yeah. with what they know works. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's here's one thing about this though. I'm I'm com- because I've been like ESO has been doing Zenimax Online has been doing all kind of weird. Like they added character leveling rewards, they're adding daily rewards and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, I have, I've been my confidence about the fact that they will start doing the stuff that we would love in the game, like maybe a rare mount from the thing. My confidence about that is growing ever really? slowly. Yeah, ever slowly, it's growing. Would they, well, I mean, here at one point they do something really, really like i hate it for example there will be a new crown crate only motif yeah that will only drop in pages not the entire book yeah now when i see this i'm like okay that's ridiculous but then on the other side they also add more sort of in-game rewards as well so i'm like you know what maybe they will do it at one point <laughs> it's a i don't know see here's <clears throat> <clears throat> they they only do a couple things in the in the in the game for they've never done a amount as an in-game reward period any time well yeah yeah and i think i mean now it's a leveling reward the sorrel horse is a level up reward for level 10 or something like I mean, that yeah but it's not grind like it's not locked behind the dungeon like okay i i completed Veteran. I just got uh, Ashlander daggers and Worm Cult shields from the first anniversary thing. See, see, see? this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I'm glad you got it, man. At well, least, at least one thing. I got <laughs> one thing. So I- I'm just doing the crap. Oh, and I got Mazatune helmets. Oh, nice. <laughs> So I got three motif pages <laughs> from the first five. Uh. <laughs> so that works for me. And thanks, yeah. uh, Shadowed Heart, for the bits again. Woo! <laughs> I'm much appreciated, man. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Worm Cult is worth so much. Yeah, but I want to use it. I want to use it, Javos, because I want to. Because I'm a collector. <laughs> Ooh, Ashlander Dagger added to... Oh, that's pretty neat. Now, because it unlocked it for... Um, for my my uh, costumes, nice, mm. nice. Okay, um, yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> I was working on the southeast section of Morrowind. Um, mm-hmm. There is a delve that I cannot figure out how to do. I, I mean, it never completes. So there's got to be a quest somewhere, and I just don't know what it is. Like. Um, you said South Morrowind, right? Yeah, here, let me open up my map here. I'll show you. It's well, the I, I don't see a map. Matis Akin Egg Mine, which is just kind of um, just a little bit north of Moleg Mar Way Shrine. Hmm. Like, I've done it. I've killed the boss, but it never completes because I'm assuming there's a quest, but I can't find the quest. I don't know. I mean, I only did the main quest of Morrowind, oh. and I didn't d- in like go into the, you know, uh, the words, the side quests. So I, I don't know actually. Right, right. Um, oh, Mazatun helmets, nice. It, no, that, oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, but they're ugly. So, I mean, ew. 
Hey, at least you can sell it though. No, like, even if they're yeah, ugly. I don't have it, so I want it. <laughs> yeah, see that that's also kind of the issue is I, I like uh I like collecting this stuff, so in death. Oh wow. Oh the worm cult shield's pretty cool looking. Nice. Yeah, the overall the worm cult uh the motif is very cool, yeah. I'm gonna have to I sold all of my pieces though. I, I well I only got one. So there's that. Oh. But if I gotten if I had gotten more, I would have sold them too. Uh the thing is that they're adding more and more into the crafting system, and I'm slowly starting to regret that I never got into crafting. Like, with the outfit system, I regretted it. That's the first time I regretted selling all the motifs I got. Right. Because now I could have used them. Even if I don't do crafting, I could have used them for my costumes. And now there's jewelry crafting as well. So slowly and surely, I am like, oh, I mm. should have. I should have done these. Yeah. I'm hopping to my other character here to do the dailies because uh, I could do the crafting dailies on this girl. So I'll do yeah, them on yeah, her nice. too. Because I have a lot of characters I can just do daily crafting on. <laughs> Yay. Um, so that was cool. Um, but <clears throat> as of this point, <clears throat> I'm about halfway done with Morrowind. Now the main storyline, I'm not really sure where I am on that. Because I think mm. when you talk to Vivek, he kind of sends you off to like three different towns, I guess. Yes. The, Yo, no, uh, no. It, not sure. It, I don't I remember I think that's much. what it was. Because when that story, he's like, here, you need to go investigate what's happening in these three towns. And oh, then, yeah. Yeah. Of course, that kind of jumps all over the place. Um, I know I still have to. I haven't visit, about, visited Balmora yet. So I know that's coming up. So that'll be pretty cool. Mm hmm. Um, pledge night fun. So yeah, we ran some pledges, uh, and we had, I think three active groups. I think it was, that was pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's yeah, 12 that was people when there. I was running it the one night. Um, so that was <laughs> really cool. Poor Stibbins and the spiders back to Stibbins, poor Stibbins. <sighs> I, I feel so bad for Stibbins. Every time you try to you do anything Lady Laurent just like tortures the heck out of this poor guy. <laughs> so I hate Lady Laurent or whatever she's called. Yeah. Um and I think the final thing that I that I did and I need to turn off this add on because it is killing me. Master Merchant, go away. Dude, I, I stole an apple by mistake, and this NPC started attacking me, so I had to kill him. And now you have a bounty. Like, and now the guards that are attacking me, not even a bounty. Oh. Because I just killed the guy in front of them. Come on. I was just trying to do dailies. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> then, I, then I have here that I was doing a world boss in, in Morrowind, uh, so Solopin Grand, and one mm -hmm. of our guildies, uh, Meg, came out and helped. This was a fun one though because it took us a long time because there's that one point where he'll jump on one person and start draining yeah. them. They can't do anything. The other person has to go up and, and bash them. And this was the first time. So he would always jump on me and uh, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. He wasn't being interrupted. So mm -hmm. He kept regaining his health, and eventually he jumped <laughs> on Meg, and I'm like, perfect, and I was able to interrupt, and we got it down, <laughs> so that was pretty neat. And, of course, now I'm just doing these daily quests here to try to see what I can get for today, but I guess that's kind of it for my tales. Um, I'm going to try to stop talking a little earlier here, so that way I can kind of regain my voice. Um, let's go ahead and move right on into the news. What do we got on All the right. docket arc? All right, so obviously they announced the update 18, the new, um, the new chapter or expansion, the Somerset Isles, the alt, like the home of the High Elves, um, which we don't really like, but mm, hey, it is yeah. the new zone. It is yeah. the new thing. So it brings a lot of new stuff. Obviously, the new zone, Somerset Isle, the island itself which is actually very beautiful as as it is with all written like the it's even though they're altmer houses and i don't there really is the like one altmer it, house they showed and i'm probably gonna end up buying Ooh, it because it's gorgeous I'm, yeah i'm gonna talk about it as well yeah okay 
Um, so, yeah, it's the home of the Altmers, but it's so beautiful, man. I mean, they did a great job. And it, obviously, Altmer zones being so lush and, you know, um, like foresty, jungly, whatever you would call it, they are beautiful zones. And it's massive. It is massive. Not in terms of overall um, area, but they made it if they made it very vertical. Mm. So the cities and whatnot, you go up and up and up. It's like Minas Tirith in a way. You know, it's just you go upwards through the cities and whatnot. So it's it's pretty big. It's pretty nice. Um, there will be a new guild line, which is the Sigic Order. And it's not like Dark Brotherhood or Thieves Guild. This is, will be actually a combat sickle line, not just a vanity, you know, uh, thing, but an actual combat sickle line with ultimates and whatnot. Right. Uh, obviously, they are bringing the Sigic Order Guild as well, which which I I'm very interested in because you know we know very little about these guys, mm -hmm. so it's really nice to learn a little bit more about it. We are, we are going to see the Arteum, the island of Sigic Order as well, which I've already seen, and I did not like it. Why not? Because I was ex I was expecting a like dark, gloomy place from all the tales I've heard about it. Like, they disappeared, they are this powerful scholar. It's like rainbows and unicorns there. <laughs> I was hoping for this dark, gloomy place, and I... Okay, this is nice. This is like... I would live here, I mean... That's funny. Rainbows yeah, and unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, there is a new crafting system, which is the jewelry crafting that we've been waiting and talking about for mm -hmm. so long, which is going to change anything. This is but, this is going to change a lot of my builds, too, because now I can oh, finally yeah. have jewelry for like Hunding's Rage and stuff yeah. there before yeah. you couldn't. Here's the thing, though. Jewelry crafting is locked behind Somerset Isles. Even if like you have a jewelry crafting station in your house, if you don't have the jewelry craft, the Somerset Isles, you won't be able to craft anything. But you will be able to buy uh, crafted jewelry from other people. Okay. This means, though, uh, you won't be able to upgrade your drops. For example, if you got a trial drop in purple, you want to upgrade it to gold. Nope, you need Somerset for that. Mm. I what I don't know is though like let's say we, one of us have Somerset Isles and we did a dungeon and I got the purple drop can I give it to you in that two hour time yeah, you upgraded and upgraded, can you give it back it'll to probably me? soul bind that's probably what I they're know. talking about I don't know maybe yeah. but if it if it if it soul binded when you uh, did something crafted on it then you wouldn't be able to sell it either. You know, and you're right there, and that's the other thing I was thinking about, even the crafted stuff. I'm assuming it's going to work the same way the tempers work, so I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do that mm -hmm. unless they put something in place <clears throat> that would prevent you from doing it. Like, um, yeah, once you trade a, uh, a dungeon drop, you know, maybe they'll add something that's like, yeah, no, you can't. You can't do this going. For, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I could see them doing that. Like the crafted stuff, maybe won't bind when you upgrade, but maybe the other stuff does. That would be my yeah, thought. Yeah, we'll see. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, which does kind of suck, but at the same time, I guess <laughs> you know. And they have. I mean, I'm I'm okay with expansions having um, content locked behind. Ooh, I got red or in swords. I mean, nice. Nice. Uh, so there'll be the Cloud Rest trial, a Ooh, new trial that is. Swords. Oh, come on. <laughs> Do you get a motif from every box you open? No. Recipe 24 Raven Pie. Ooh. Okay. Purple Hello? recipe. Hello? Back. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I wasn't sure if you were hearing or not because sometimes, you know, Discord cuts our connection. Oh, yeah. No, no, I was. I was just, I constantly kept getting motifs and <laughs> recipes. So I was just keep shouting them out. So, you know, sorry. <laughs> keep your RNG to yourself. Okay. You don't need to hear about your extreme RNGs. I, Come on. I, I see that. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. It's okay. But yeah, seriously, got more. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think it's cool anyway, but maybe maybe other people don't. I don't know. But yeah, okay. Anyway, continue. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so there will be the Cloud Rest trial. 
which is the new trial. Again, with the same as Clockwork City trial, though. Uh, the hard mode means doing all the bosses at the same time. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't. I I am not in the position of doing a hard mode trial anyway, so I'm not gonna comment on that. <clears throat> but yeah, that's the that's the Somerset Isle expansion. It's the new zone Somerset, new obviously the story and quests, the Sigic Orders Guild and the Guild uh, skill line, the jewelry crafting, the Cloud Race trial, and bunch of update eighteen um, stuff. Mm -hmm. Now the news don't stop there. Okay, we have more. Um, so they are changing how the previous content is and previous expansions is accessible and whatnot. So you know how there are a bunch of different uh, versions of ESO. There is the base game Elder Scrolls Online. There is the Imperial Edition. There is Tamriel Unlimited. There is Morrowind. Yep. And then there is the Gold Edition. So there are a heck ton of different versions of Elder Scrolls Online. And... It's the question new players always ask. Like, if, for example, when I'm streaming and they're like, "Does this game worth buying?" And I'm, and if it is, which version do I buy? Do I buy Morrowind? Do I buy the base base game? Do I sub? Do I buy the DLC? What do I do? It's very confusing for the um, previous uh, new players, I suppose. So they are going to include all that new old content into, like. ESO Plus and base game and whatnot. So for more of in the expansion, they are opening battlegrounds to everyone with Somerset with update 18. So you will you will not need uh, more of in to actually play battlegrounds now. Okay, that's good. More of yeah yeah more of in story is coming to Crown Store and ESO Plus as a DLC, the zone itself. So if you have ESO Plus, you'll be able to play more of in storyline. And the Warden class itself is coming to Crown Store. You will be able to purchase it standalone. So let's say you don't want, you don't have anything to do with Storyline. You're, you're, you're a PvPer. And this was actually a very hot discussion topic. Like, I don't care about the Storyline. Why I need the entire expansion to play a Warden or Battlegrounds? Well, now you don't need to. You will be able to do all of these things individually. And they're also getting rid of all those... Um, versions i think like this version tamriel unlimited more of in whatnot and just putting them into one right one nice bundle i think and I, uh, when a game gets a lot even world of warcraft did this everquest does that now because if you had to go back and buy every expansion that everquest had they're up to like 23 or something weird like that mm -hmm. now it's like the latest and maybe one before it and same with like world of warcraft i think they started bundle you don't have to buy beasts I forget where they did the cap off, but yeah, they eventually they just merge it, make it all part of the base game. Yeah. I mean, at first I was a little bit salty. I'll admit about this. I'm like, yeah, but we bought this, you know. And where's why? Why did we bought it if it was going to be available like this? But then I mean, we had a year of playtime. Like I slept on it, and I woke up less, more, more reasonable about it. Um, it's, you know, we, we had a year of gameplay time and whatnot, sure. so I guess that's, yeah, I mean, that, it's but, considered that's, like an er, one-year early access. <laughs> yeah, you could look at it that way. I mean, at the same time... Still, I would have loved if they gave us, like, you know, something, you know, hey, you purchased this, so here, here's here's a little something a little for you. something special to show that you bought it yeah. when it was, a, yeah. yeah. No, I, with, I can with, see that. Even our loyalty rewards back in the day when we were subbed and we got the... the uh, dwarven sapphire like the mm -hmm. pets and the mount so yeah i love my reward. no i agree there's there's certain things that was kind of like man i wish they still did these things but mm -hmm. that's kind of i suppose uh, it, now now that i'm thinking about it like if you bought the collector's edition or something like that or pre-ordered it you do have your pet and mount that came with it you got the nixos nixox mount for buying it uh, as Clan of, Clan of Orphan says as well. Yeah, that too. That too, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sure there will be some cosmetics to show off for it. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. mean, of course, then there's also playing the content, right? Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you're getting to do this ahead of time. Yep. <clears throat> but you also got to look at it from a new player perspective that the cost to entry, if you had to buy every expansion, like, this is actually one of the things yeah. that keeps me out of Lotro. Um, 
is the cost of entry because every mm. si- you still they they never wrapped it all together. So yeah. there every time you enter a zone more or less it's like okay well in order to play this zone you need to buy this quest pack, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're entering the mines of Moria. You can <laughs> enter the zone but there'll be nothing for you to do unless you buy it. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think I did some rough calculations or something like that. If I were to buy every single thing, it would be something like four hundred dollars. I think it is. Ooh! Just to <laughs> play the entire game. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess if you had bought it at the time, it would probably be similar amount. But that's mm. a big turnoff for a new player at the same time. Yeah. Which I mean, yeah. at some point you gotta be like, you know, you gotta pay for what's available. But yeah, mm-hmm. it my first thought was, wow, that's a lot of money I gotta throw up front. And and maybe I would never get to those or I could it, I could break it over time. But it's just that first turn off of wow, you know. Yeah. If I'm having a if if I'm moving at a decent pace or whatever, am I gonna if, is this gonna be a a hundred dollar weekend, you know, so I can play <laughs> all weekend kind of deal? Like you know, and for other people, it was spread over a, a specific amount of time, right? Like, yeah. oh, you're right. I spent four hundred dollars, but it was every six months I put fifty down or something. You know, that that's a little yeah. easier to swallow than I just really feel like playing the game, and all of a sudden I'm looking at four hundred dollars. You know, yeah. So that that's... also like since oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, oh, <laughs> you're, you're right. also that the fact that they're. Uh... Adding battlegrounds to the base game now mean that battlegrounds will be more populated finally. Yeah, and it will be easier to find games, more variety between you know things, and maybe if they reach enough numbers, they will allow us to choose which type of battlegrounds we want to do. Like I want to do champion point, I want to do non-champion point. Mm. That would be lovely. I think the reason they're not doing it right now is because, like, there are not enough players. That's my theory. We don't know for sure, but right. um, that's what I think of that. Because sometimes you queue for battlegrounds and it's like waiting for players, waiting for players, waiting for players, and you give up. Right. So yeah, that'll be that'll be a nice change as well. I think. Yeah. No. And and honestly, when it comes to systems, I really do think a lot of systems should have been in the base game, and I get why they didn't. I guess, but at the same time. They probably should. Uh, also, the, remember how I said we will at least have the you know collectors pack thingies. Well, they will be in Crown Store as well. So more event collectors pack will include all the different collectibles you can get previously from the digital collectors edition and discovery pack. Oh, really? Now, yeah. Now that I don't like. Yeah. That I do not like. Like if I bought the collectors edition back in time, don't put them in the Crown Store as well. You know, let me let me have those to myself. Like Armored Warhorse, I mean, I didn't buy the Digital Collector's Edition for uh, Morrowind, so I shouldn't be the one to talk. But I I wouldn't want these to be available to me, for example, right? Because I didn't I didn't pay it in back in time. I so keep this strictly to the ones who committed to this. Hmm. Mm, yeah. yeah, but yeah, this will be apparently available. Okay. Well, I mean, it's more money for Zoss. I think that's what they're looking at. They yeah. don't care about the digital exclusivity in this case. They just want to, you know, quote unquote, get as much money as they can. Yeah, that makes sense. From a business perspective, that makes perfect sense. Like, why would you give up on this opportunity to provide, you know, cosmetic exclusivity, exclusivity whatever that thing, mm-hmm. to your players? But from a player perspective, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And I see Kamundi says, I don't like the idea of co- making content totally unavailable. I agree with you on that case because I actually hate time exclusive stuff. But, you know, um, that's kind of an issue on my, my part. Oh, but he's, no, but he's, he's talking about unlocking everything after a certain time. So no exclusivity at all, forever. I don't agree with that. I like the f- idea that I have the Dwemer Sephir pet and you don't, Kim. Because <laughs> that's... Be- 
I mean, that's the reward for being there at the very start of the game and yeah. subscribing, like not giving up on the game when the game was bug ridden and like there were literally um make bugs that made the game unplayable. Now it's a joke, like we see a very funny bug and we say, oh, literally unplayable. But that was a thing. Yep. For the first six months of ESO, there was a quest boss and it wouldn't spawn. Like you would wait there like this for for an hour waiting for that boss to spawn to actually do the quest. And we still subbed and we still supported the game back yep. then. That's the reward yep. for that. And I do not want that pet or that mount or those pets in general to be available to anyone else. I agree. That like, that one is I, you know, we suffered through a lot. I mean, at that point, <laughs> and I mean, I still, I'm of the notion, I wish it was still a sub game, but, you know, uh, let's see, Kamundi, you, you complain about time limited offer in the crown store, but content lock behind CE is okay because you already have it. No, I don't have he it. He doesn't have it. No, I don't have it. And the thing I don't have the Moravian Collector's Edition. I just have the Moravian Standard Edition. And I still favor the idea that it should be locked. I mean... Uh, if you are going to make it available in in Crown Store later, so I don't know. Yeah, hmm. I don't like, see. I can't. The thing that I'm curious about the collector's edition stuff never bothers me. It's the yeah, pre-order it's, stuff that, that it's like. Well, I mean, you did pre-order. What it. was? The, yeah, yeah. Like I the mean, Queen's what was bounty. the pre-order bonus for? Um. Oh my goodness! I wish I could even remember now. There were a few yeah. things, but like let's let's talk about Somerset because that's in our minds. Um, pre-order, right. obviously, oh. you get that that weird spectral tiger type mount, um, and of course, then you have the costumes and things. Yeah, I suppose you are right. Like collector's edition. Yeah, I I, I admit being now that I think about it, I admit being wrong on that. Uh, collector's edition can be available, but pre-order. I was talking more on. Like pre-order stuff, and I'm not sure if the pre-order stuff is available because I don't remember what the pre-order stuff was. Right. I think it was the dog, right? Was it the dog? No. It might. No, have wait. Been. Because I have the dog as well, but I didn't. I don't have the collector's edition. I don't. I honestly don't I remember have the, what. Yeah, I mean, it's not that that important anyway, but. Man, I gotta just disable this master merchant across the board because this is killing <laughs> me. Every time I log on to a new character, it's like, ah, nope, you gotta, you gotta fix that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What else we got? Oh yeah. Okay, right. Let's move on from. This. Yeah. Right. We got too confused. Yeah. Um. So details of jewelry crafting. There is a full article about this. Obviously, uh, we are not going to go through the entire thing. Um, but I'm sure it will be in the like show notes below, or yep. you can just go to Elder Scrolls Online's news section and find it. Uh, so the nodes, like the same as everything else, we'll be able to collect materials, like you know, uh, rubidite ores and whatnot. There will be materials that we will we can collect. Uh, there is a new trait, by the way. I'm not sure if this is specific to jewelry. Or not. I think though this is jewelry trait. There are two different traits now. Actually, more than two. No, there are I think three. there's six total because there's the robust, the arcane, and healthy, which were already there, but now they're adding like bloodthirst. There's, I think there's six yeah. total traits now for jewelry crafting. Mm, okay, let me let me quickly check. Uh, uh, protective, yeah, there are six. Yeah, yeah. protective, triune, triune, something like yeah, that. Yeah, which is the <laughs> essentially the version of. Uh, Help me out here. The protective uh, gives you raw resistances. The triune is essentially the prismatic trait. And then bloodthirsty it is execute whenever you do damage yeah. or whenever you're, um, I shouldn't say do damage. It's more of whenever you are below a certain amount of health, you'll do more damage for all your attacks. So it's just like a default uh, execute. No, no, no. The, uh, it's... If the thing that you're attacking is below a certain threshold, you will do more damage to that. Yeah, it, thing. It, like an execute. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there'll be, of course, jewelry crafting upgrade materials, uh, jewelry crafting skill line, and whatnot. So the details you can just go and um, look into. 
because it's a long article detailing everything about it. Um, but yeah, jewelry crafting. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we didn't mention, two-handed weapons will be mm -hmm. counting as two set bonuses now. So awesome! It is going to change a lot. Like, with jewelry crafting and this, ESO meta builds, or rather, entire ESO build system will change. Like, all of the builds will have to be revamped and there will be so much more variety. I uh, the dual wield meta is really going to get sh you know shaken up. Yeah. Part of yeah. part of the issue with not ha allowing the two wheels is you were giving up the the two five sets and a monster set. Whenever mm -hmm. you went with yeah. a two hander, you had to go either monster set five and like three or four. I think it's three. Um, mm -hmm. Are a five five and a master weapon. You were giving up. You literally had to give something up because nothing else would work. Um, yeah. Because you were missing essentially one set. Now you don't have to worry about that in the same regard. You'll be able to have the same amount of set bonuses as anyone else in the game. So I know for the longest time, and I still do this because I prefer two handed over anything else, that I was intentionally hurting myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When it came to sets, because you know, it's like, well, sorry, you you're using a a um, a a two hander. You are mm -hmm. immediately hurting yourself overall. But now yeah. that's gonna change, and thank goodness for that. Because <laughs> also, Jason Star is in chat. Hello, hello. You are still a mod, indeed. <laughs> what? Are you unmodding him? Yes, I am. <laughs> yep. It's gone. Rip. <laughs> Shouldn't have said anything. Uh, rip sour. Sorry. You remembered. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. Nice try. When you were super active in the community, it made sense. Now, now, now you're a fleeting nomad. You are you are one of the plebs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I see. The other thing that was really fun is so many builds I was doing was, um, you know, like looking at like Alcast and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. but he was always doing dual wield, and so I would take yeah. sets that he was doing, and I'd have to modify them a little bit because obviously I'm gonna have to give something up. Now that's not necessarily the case. Obviously, uh, my son upstairs practicing his thum. He's very upset. <laughs> um, obviously, part of that's going to change now um, because maybe I'd be giving up crit or whatever. Part of part of you know the thing that two hander is still somewhat unattractive on uh, for most mm -hmm. classes is the fact that you're giving up the daggers, which have their innate crit, right? Yeah, because that's what daggers have. If you're using a sword, you get raw 5% extra damage or whatever, which is okay, but maybe something along the lines of the plebs, the the plebs, because he said plebs, the uh, <laughs> the axe with the, the bleed Bleeding. or the mace with the pure penetration may be very attractive in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and we'll see. That that's it's it's going to change a lot of the meta. Like it's definitely will do. Yeah. And... I mean five five crafted set, that's mm. that's gonna change. also no need for jewelry grinding because now we can craft the jewelry part and use the other parts of the drop sets and whatnot. It's, Quite honestly, I already know one of the first builds I'm playing with, which is probably gonna be something along the lines of Salines um for monster set, five hundings, five uh mechanical acuity. Ooh. Ooh. Or five clever alchemist and five mechanical equity. Oh, that would even like proc them both at the same time. Mm. That burst damage will be a lot. That like it will lot. be crazy burst damage. That is definitely yeah. a lot of burst. A lot of, damage. lot of theory crafting to do. I just got buoyant armager staves. All right. Are you serious? I op. Yeah. Dude, I opened. Ooh. Diagram. So many boxes. I didn't get a single buoyant arm measured piece. Yeah. And you just how how long have you been 
<laughs> doing the show. Hun, like an hour and 20 minutes at tops. Yeah. And you got the yeah. motive that now. Right. Come on. Yeah. What did you do with the RNG god, man? What, where, where do you have him locked up? I'm telling you. Fun times indeed. Uh, ooh, that's garbage. See, to anyone who's new here, this and seen me talk about Agelos's RNG, this is it. This is it. Like, Oh, and I apparently got Assassin's League gloves, too. Cool. Didn't know I had that. I give up. I give up. I give up. I'm, I'm just going to move on to the next piece of me, right. uh, like news and, yeah, let's, yeah. let's just ignore you. All ignore right. you getting all the good stuff. All right. That's fine. So there will with update 18 there will be a lot of PvP additions and improvements. So these these changes I love. Okay. Uh new I don't know what AVA means. New AVA exclusive quests and alliance versus says. alliance. Yep. So that would be That makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah. Maybe <laughs> Right. I think it's um, Cyrodiil or Imperial Yeah, City. yeah, Cyrodiil. It's it's for Cyrodiil. I just didn't know what AVA was oh, yeah, and it alliance. makes sense that it's alliance versus alliance. So uh, there will be new daily quests, not repeatables like the previous kill 20 players, capture ca Castle Odyssey and whatnot, but just once per day quests. So these are capture three keeps, capture nine resources, kill 40 enemy players, and capture the three towns. Now, as you can see, they are now not like castle specific like the previous quest because it was a huge problem. If you were dominating the map, or if the castle that you have a quest for was yours already, you weren't able to do it. <clears throat> so uh, it's like even if right now, even if you have the emperor circle, emperor ring, yeah. you'll still be able to do these quests, mm -hmm. these dailies, because there will almost always be a castle or keep that you can just retake or whatnot. So that's a, that's a good change. And these will be dropping, I suppose, better it doesn't say here, but oh yeah, these will give you the gla gladiator's rock sack, whatever that is. Okay. Um, and using these gladiator rock sacks, you will be able to combine them into a gladiator's. Oh, these will contain a gladiator's proof. So many names, just make it one name, and you can combine twenty of these gladiator's proof into one helmet cosmetic. That is Alliance for PvP exclusive. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And apparently, I think we can... Wait, can we sell this? Because it says, with these new daily rewards, we are giving AVA players something unobtainable anywhere else in the game that has to be sourced from the Alliance War. Not only does it give them a unique look, but also something valuable and rare they can sell. So I think we can sell these. Well, that would make sense. But yeah, but we can get them only in Alliance War, and I love that because that means I can get, I can do PvP and make money at the same time. I love this. This is this is like this is my this is my area. I love it. Okay. So um, now there will be here. There is a here's the thing. In Alliance War, you get a lot less AP Alliance points than Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds currently is the way to get Alliance points. It's a lot faster. But uh, they're increasing the amount of alliance points you are getting from alliance war deeds, as well as how you get them are changing. So before, you would have to be there when the alliance like point takes, right? If you are yeah. capturing a resource, everyone would wait under the flag until it takes doing nothing. Right. Now, you don't have to wait for the tech. If you contribute it somehow, during that, um, during that, during the capture of that resource castle, whatever, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can just run off to the next, uh, next keep or resource after it's captured, and it will keep you in its resource. It will keep you in its credit list, so you will still get your uh, alliance points from that one, and you don't have to wait idle, like keep, stay idle until the resources tick. Oh. And you will now get alliance points for defending resources and keeps as well. Mm. Not just capturing it, but defending it. Mm. So there will be a lot of new, uh, more alliance point income during Cyrodiil. They're apparently making catapults a lot 
more powerful to be more effective in area denial thing. Yeah. Nothing really to read about it, but uh, catapults more powerful. You'll be able to deny trebuchets and whatnot with a few catapults. So the siege meta is going to change a bit, I suppose, because no one has been using catapults. It's either ballistas or trebuchets, and now they're uh, increasing it. But most importantly, performance improvements. So with the dual core support, uh, or rather multiple core support. Oh, yes. And, that is yeah, be and a so bit of beautiful. Yeah, able to passive effect changes and whatnot, apparently that was taxing on the server. I'm not going to go into detail. They are saying there will be some uh, performance improvements in zero deal. So thank God for that. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. just, just going to multi-core support is going to be really cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. like... Oh man, <laughs> I'm just excited for that. So yeah, that was the end of the news. Quickly sum up: we had Summer Sale and Update 18, Morrowind content being accessible without actually buying the, buying the Morrowind expansion. What I'm curious is though, will Morrowind expansion still like? For example, this happened, mm -hmm. and I bought a non-used Morrowind expansion code or you know box or whatever. Yep. And I have the key now. Yep. What happens? What gives? Hmm. Hmm. Like, do, can the old codes can still be redeemed? Yeah, you can as... still use the old codes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You'd be fine. Yeah. All right. So, Jewelry Crafting, Sigic Order, PvP additions and improvements. They are the all the fun stuff that's going to happen at June 5th for both PC and consoles at the same time. Ooh. It's the Somerset release. All right. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next thing. Actually, I'm going to... I'm not going to skip them, but we're going to change the order. We're going to go to our email first <coughs> before yeah, okay. I do the, <coughs> the reading, which is good because I just coughed. Anyway, so this comes from a Jonathan Birdie. He had some questions. Hey, guys. Hope all is well with you, too. And I thought I'd send a few questions since I haven't uh, in a while. Also, I think you'd be happy to know... I don't main a mag sork anymore. It's a red guard stam blade, and here's my question. That's not better. Yeah, it's probably not very. That's not better. <laughs> I just this episode talked about how I hate them. I, um, uh. Yeah, I mean, I guess the <laughs> the sentiment was nice, but you picked the other class that aren't Kate, so uh, <laughs> I know it's a little bit here and there at this point. But anyway, sorry, nice try. It was cool though while it lasted. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. Let's continue what I was actually reading. First off question, I um, we all know that Ag's favorite motif is mercenary, but what is Ark's? I think my all-round favorite is the hollow jack items. What? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, I'm going to go with skin changer, heavy. Yeah, you know, I'm really fond of the skin changer now. I'm and actually if you look at my character that's on the screen, that's what he's wearing, skin changer. Hold on. So I, mean, I may well with some exceptions. I think the shoulders I'm using a light yeah, armor yeah. piece of uh I think ancient elf, because it actually looks fairly decent mm -hmm. overall. Like you can see it right there. My guy actually it sort of fits with the rest of it without being too crazy so i honestly yeah. i think i'm with arc now i do love mercenary <laughs> but skin changer i think is now starting to quickly become one of my favorites i mean skin changer especially that chest piece is like yeah it says that i'm going to crush your skull you know it's it gives you that feeling and and i think part of it's not just that for me it's also the um the the legs I like the scale mail that yeah, they have going yeah. on. Um, so that that was overall something. it's a very beautiful piece. My favorite combination though is imperial chest, shoulders, legs, boots, and a Nordic helmet and belt. Mm. That has been my uh, look for a very long time from the days of my role playing times. Gotcha. But yeah, motive skin changer combination imperial setup with a Nordic helmet. Mm. Gotcha. Since the announcement of Somerset, we can assume this and the AD chapter in Morrowind uh, 
Um, all right, we assume this is the AD chapter and Marwin was the EP chapter. Do you guys think that next year will be DC uh, DC oriented chapter following Derry and Gutierrez? Um, Ooh. don't know how they are going to explain his escape from Cold Harbor, but I believe there were some hints in the Asorium that he's still alive, or maybe even oh. Akavir, uh, one which I know you guys answered before and doubted there'd be a release, uh, and doubted, but with the release of the Teshi motif, that got me thinking it could happen. You know, mm-hmm. I was kind of on the fence with the Akavir, and I still sort of am... Uh, the Teshi stuff has been around because you got to remember the potentate, which was pretty much assassinated in game. What? Maybe five years ago in terms of actual game mechanics was like five years ago. He was Teshi. So that the motifs and stuff would have been around. Like it hasn't been, it was within living memory that a, a Teshi actually existed, you know? So, you know, that's kind of my thought on the matter. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure the next chapter will be Daggerfall oriented. Yeah, mm. but not sure about a career. See, and, the- and this is kind of my thought on it is I think the Darien Gutierrez storyline is going to get solved now. Like with this patch. It's Somerset. Yeah, because the hint was that he was stuck in a Daedric realm with Minfal- Minfilia or uh, don't Minfala. give too much spoilers. Well, I mean, it that that kind of you saw that in Orsinium, so yeah, that's why I didn't complete Orsinium yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Rip me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But yeah, no. Still. Um. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I I really don't think they're gonna touch Akavir because. <sighs> That is, it, it's kind of like the idea of the Dwemer, right? We know a little bit more about Akavir, but not much. And remember that there was an um, imperial invasion of Akavir, Akavir in the third era, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't think we're going to know anything more about Akavir than what they knew then, right? So that hasn't happened yet. So I highly yeah, doubt that, makes- that we're going to see anything change because they will want to keep that sense of mystery like they do with with Orsinium. My thoughts. Anyway. All right. I want your guys' opinion on this, but I would love to see a small story content DLC this year to revolve around a cult, maybe a Daedric uh, Prince. So many spoilers in that message. Oh, really? Trying to hunt uh, yeah. you down and kill you because you can't defeat Moly Ball, save... Vex Divinity, defeat T- Tyrannical Orc King, save Sothasil, and save the Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild without painting some sort of massive target on your back. I also yeah. pictured all the bad guys in Tamriel having a meeting, uh, you know, talking about the evil doing with one little minion coming in saying, yeah, there's this guy, the Vestige, who just keeps <laughs> stopping bad stuff happening. Maybe we should get rid of him. That's a good idea, like but that that's not how Elder time. Scrolls does it. Yeah. Yeah. What? I'm, what about at the end of the Dark Brotherhood when it kind of leads to Morrowind with uh, the sweet up. roll killer? I see. I didn't complete oh, Dark Brotherhood right. either. Well, <laughs> again, there's. Uh, I'm gonna spend this week just questing, man. Just questing, yeah. like nothing else. Well, I still haven't lock myself Morrowind up. either, so I'll, I have yeah. homework to do as well. So it's yeah. not like. <laughs> I don't have things that I need to do to get caught up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, but overall, I feel like Daedric Princes would be very accustomed to one guy stopping them all the time be- for, throughout all eras. Well, th- it's- the other thing I was thinking of was the fact that you got to remember, we're not the only vestige in this game. Yeah. yeah I mean, much 10 million it, I know the way it's, it's played. <laughs> Like you would think we are, but in reality we're not. Mole Ball stole tons of souls. Yeah. And the way that they, they, they write the story is that it's more akin to um the vestige, even the fight with Molek Ball, it wasn't just you. It was other mm-hmm. yeah. vestiges as well, you know. Like I think I think that is more akin to what what we'll see is 
that it's kind of hard to have a single target when I think you are being portrayed as, um, you know, you're, you're not the only one. Not like other Elder Scrolls games where it's like, oh, you're the hero of Kavach. No, it's it's more more broad reaching than that. I don't I don't yeah, honestly think yeah. that we are quote unquote considered the um the only one. I guess that's my thoughts. I don't know if Ark feels the same or not, but maybe Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. So I c I kinda wanna look at this <laughs> two handed great sword from the the Radorians that I just got added. What is that? Thieves Guild. What does that look like? Did it switch? It didn't switch. Sorry, I'm just looking at this great sword. <laughs> I want to see what it looks like. Eh, it's not bad looking, I guess. One of the better looking ones. I don't really care for it, but it looks nice why I had it. Anyway, um, so there we go. Four, what impact do you guys think <clears throat> jewelry crafting will have on the meta when it's released. Uh, I've always spoke to a fellow guild member saying that if you could have five piece jewelry on as end seducer, it'd be an amazing starter set for magic users. It's really going to shake it up. I really do yeah. think it's going <clears> to, <throat> it's going to be a big thing. I think we talked about that earlier, but yeah, it's going to be massive. Um, last question. ESO has a pretty good fan base, but what things do you guys uh, would you guys implement if you were Zoss workers to take the game to the next level to compete with WoW? Right. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, for for one thing, I've always heard about heard from World of Warcraft players, my friends, um, about Elder Scrolls Online is how are the raids. Like, are they very hardcore raids? Are they grind? Are they exclusive? Like, basically the mounts, the exclusive mounts, and things that you can do as a group and grind. Now, I myself don't like grinding. I hate grinding. I, I wouldn't mind if there were no grind at all in this game, but I'm also a person who spends most of his jump, time jumping around. But the way I see it, people want something to grind like just 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 today just now uh belazarus of aleth and he mentioned that his problem is that there are no incentive to go end game and it, yeah so definitely lacks that so more trials more hardcore content with not just set rewards but rng based rewards something like that yeah you know? no more in-game rewards basically more in-game rewards yes. for people to grind and look for yes that's just story that that would be my main thing more in-game rewards they need to actually do more of a balance with their cash shop um and put more things in that people can work towards and strive towards yeah. so it's not just what you pay on your thing so anyway as always keep up fantastic work you two are the reason i started listening to podcasts oh that's awesome hail sithis and in a fading voice hail citizen sexplar forever i agree arc wanted see, to remove he, that but i didn't let yeah him. see he started with switching to night stamblade and he ended with sexplar forever what this entire mail man it's, <laughs> it's targeted against me i'm telling you I'm telling uh, you. <laughs> All right. Now I'm looking at this Tamrail Trade Center. Search. Ooh. So are we going to do the reading? We are or... going to do the reading. All right. We are going to do the reading. So I'm going to pull that up. So we're going to do two lessons again this week um, as per the norm. Um, I don't know what I just did, but anyway. All right. So 36 Lessons of Vivek Sermon of... 22. Then Vivek left the first whirling school and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provisional house, he looked into the middle world to find the second monster, which was called the Treasure Wood Sword. Within years of the pomegranate banquet, it had become a lessening tune to the lower Velothi houses. They preached of its power. The Treasure Wood Sword, Splinter, uh, Sun, uh, what is that? Salentia of the high I and glorious, who we, 
he who wields it becomes self-known. The warrior poet appeared as a visitation in the ancestor alclove of House Mora, whose rose-worn prince of garlands was a hero against the northern demons. Vivek congregated with the bones. He said, A scavenger cannot acquire a silk sash and expect to discover the greater systems of its predecessor. Perfect happiness is embraced only by the weeping. Give me back and... Do so freely what is barren of my marriage, and I will not erase you from the thought realm of God. Your line has a notable enchantress that my sister Arin is fond or AM is fond of, and from her murky wisdom alone do I con- condescend to ask. A bone walker emerged from the wall. It had three precious stones set in its lower jaw, a magical practice of the old. One was opal, the color of opal. The bone walker bowed to the prince of the middle air and said, The treasure wood sword will not leave our house. Bargains were made with the black hands, Menphalia, and the greater shade. Vivek kissed the precious stone and said, Animal picture, rude walker, go back to the lamp that stays lit in the water and store no more messages of useless noise. Down. He kissed the second precious stone and said, Proud residue, soon disperse. Serve no guarantees made in my fore image and demand nothing of its underskin. I am the master evermore. Down. He kissed the opal and said, Down I take thee. And then Vivek withdrew from the hidden places and found the darkest mothers of the Morig Tong, taking them all to wife and filling them with undusted loyalty that tasted of summer salt. Kinky? I'm oh, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. They became as black queens screaming live with a hundred murderous sons, a thousand murderous arms, and a hundred thousand murderous hands. One vast moving event of thrust, killing, laughter in alleys, palaces, workshops, cities, and secret halls. Their movements among the holdings of the Rathim were as rippled endings. Heaving between times and with all fates leading to swallowed knives, murdered as moaning, God's holy rape erasure of wet death. Mm. The king of assassins presented to Vivek the treasure wood sword. My lord, the king of assassins said, the prince of House Mora is now fond of you as well. I place him in the corner of Dagon. His eyes I set in. Into the fire prayer for the wicked, his mouth I stuffed with birds. The ending of the words is Om Sylvie. I need a drink after wow. that one. <laughs> Dear heaven above. Hmm. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. The weirder and weirder it gets. I'm telling you. It, <laughs> it definitely is weird. Woo. Wow. All right. Back to what I was working on here. Let's see. Oh, that's what I want. I want that thing. Oh. oh. You got a new follower. Hope. Thank you. Well, it's hope you hello, hello. hope you hate me. Nice. Well, <laughs> I guess. I mean, if you want me to. It depends. Are, if, 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 are, are you are an ultimate? Yeah. Yeah. Are you an ultimate? Yeah. Yeah. Are you an ultimate? <laughs> uh, and yeah, if you're an Altmer, maybe. All right. Anyway, 36 lessons of Vivek. Sermon 23, the scripture of the sword. First, the sword treated as delicate meal is a symbiotic college. It serves you well in the first half of life. Name one dynasty that knows this not. The unity of my approach is understood by the immovable warrior. True eyes are acquired Rejoice as my own subjects and realms. I build for you a city of swords by which I mean laws that cut the people who live there into better shapes. Girls burn their dresses on my arrival if I am armored. Ooh, 
he's a he's a ladies man right there. Anyway, they crawl <laughs> <laughs> to me as blood pilgrims. Minor spirits die without trace. Follow me of all the alms of thee if you are to mark your days with killing. Ai Atadun, the third law of weaponry. The immobile warrior is never fatigued. He cuts sleep holes in the middle of battle to regain his strength. Oh, all right. Instinct is not reflex action, but many miracles held in reserve. I am welfare that decides which warrior will emerge. Beg not for luck, serve me to win. The span of the apparently inactivated is your love of the absolute. The birth of God from the Netcherman's wife is the abortion of kindness from love. The true sword is able to cut chains of generations, which is to say the creation myths of your enemies. Look on me as the exiled garden. All else is uncut weed. I am the ancient road tempered by the second walking way. Your hands must be huge to wield any sword the size of an ancient road. And yet, he who is of right stature may irritate the sun with only a stick. The ending of the words is Am Solvi. The only thing I understood is that he he takes power naps during the battle. Yeah, that's what I was I got. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, I'm tired, oh. but it's okay. Yeah, he just, just swings his sword. I'll take takes it. like a couple seconds of power nap. Oh, oh, I'm regaining his muscle. Yep, I'm, nope, I'm, I'm all good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, there is some, there is a lot of, like, uh, the sixth verse, he, he refers to his birth again. Uh, the mm-hmm. abortion of kindness, meaning, like, his mother was essentially, like, ripped apart in order for him to be born. Mm. So, there was that. That was, his birth was when they, she was captured by the Dwemer. Mm-hmm. Um, he makes, of course, reference to the second walking way, which is... A reference to Kaim once again, the idea of achieving godhood. Uh, so that we're seeing that a lot throughout all of this, and of course, you yeah. know, it's all kind of intermixed with his, I guess, over sexualized, <laughs> um, just who Vivek yeah. really is, I guess. I, I, I've, and it kind of made me laugh when I first read this, um. Girls burn their dresses on my arrival. Is that like the Tamrielic version of throwing your panties at a musician? Because that's kind of <laughs> what suppose. I feel like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Crazy. All right. So those are our two lessons of Vivek for this week. Next week, we'll look at the next two sermons. Idea is we're going to try to hammer through these so we can start through on a new, um, a new series of lessons. Obviously, with the number of weeks that we've been off due to illness and whatnot, we've fallen behind because the idea was to finish this before um, Somerset, but it looks like we might be a little behind on that, so that's why we've been doubling up in order to finish a few things. But we will get that, and we will finish as we go. All Mm -hmm. right, Ark, time for our final thoughts. Where can people find you? Uh well, people can find me at anywhere Arkanir. That is A R K H A N I I R. I stream regularly on Twitch now. I can probably say. Yeah. Um, that is twitch.tv slash Arkanir. The game. I I've been focusing more on Elder Scrolls Online with a mix of everything other, you know, mixed in there yeah, basically. Yeah. And you can follow me on Twitter at twittercom slash Arkanir. And that's about it. All right. Oh, and I. Apparently got attacked by something, but I don't even know what it is. Oh, it's a <laughs> Cliff Strider. Oh, all right. Well, My now favorite. It's dead. Now it's dead. It's I hate good. them. Yeah. All right. Well, you can follow me at a jealous A G G E L O S underscore W O F on Twitter. Of course, follow our channel, uh, twitch.tv slash dungeon crawl network, where you can see this show live as well as a bunch of our other stuff when we stream. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. You can follow us, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. That's where you'll find links to our Facebook, our Twitch, our YouTube, all of that. Um, I do have to give a 
a shout that we finally hit over 5k subs on our YouTube channel, which was pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah. Actually, when I last looked, we've been getting a lot. Um, but you know, I know a lot of that comes from our Ashes of Creation show because that's mm-hmm. really big on YouTube. Whereas this show is more on iTunes, has where you know we have most of our yeah. listenership here. But yeah, that channel has been growing. So if you don't follow us on YouTube, go ahead and check that out. YouTube.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network. Be part of that and help us grow. That's always appreciated. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. We hope everyone enjoyed this episode of Tales of Tamriel. And we will be ne- back next week. See you later, everybody. Have a good one. When Akatosh slew Lorcan, he ripped his heart right out. He hurled it across Tamriel, and the heart was heard to shout. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end. The laughing heart sprayed blood afar, a gout on seer it fell. And like a dart shot to its mark, down in an alien well. Magic effused the lork in blood to crystal red and strong. Then wild elves cut and polished it down to chimel at a ball. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end. When elves lost Nern to men, Akatosh gave the stone. To Saint Alesh in token of her right to sit the throne Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end